Another example of using row reduction to solve a system, starting with the augmented matrix. Example number two. So, say it's x plus 2y plus 3z equals 4. 5x plus 6y plus 7z equals 8. And 6, 7, 8, 7. Okay. Obviously not the most random choice of numbers, but one wonders, just is it going to be different from the previous example? Well, let's do it. Let's leave the first row alone. We're going to take the second row minus 5 times the first row. Going to make that 0. 6 minus 10 is minus 4. 7 minus 15 is minus 8. 8 minus 20 is minus 12. And we're going to take the third row, minus 6, times the first row. That's going to make a 0 here. Amazing. 7 minus 12 is minus 5. 8 minus 18 is minus 10. And 7 minus 24... Uh, yeah, 7 minus 24 is minus 17. Boop. Two, three, four. And now, um, you might have noticed that you can change the pivots to be one whenever you want to do that. And um, there is a situation where that's pretty smart. If these guys are all divisible by the pivot, then go ahead and divide by that. Um, again, it's there's a lot of things where you can try to be clever where it's maybe not worth it because it kind of gets you out of the pattern. Um, but that's a pretty good example of something that's worth it, worth doing. Okay, So now I'm actually going to skip a tiny bit and do those two steps at once. So I, I just put that in place. That's just uh, minus one-fourth times two. Okay. Again, there will be situations where we actually kind of want to prevent that. Uh, postpone that step, but I think it's a good step to do right now. And now I'm going to use that row to kill these guys. So this is 3 minus this version, uh, minus, or sorry, plus 5 times the second row. And that's going to give minus 5 plus 5 is 0, minus 10 plus 10 is 0. Ooh, ooh, I wanted a 1 there, or something, or something non zero. And then minus 17 plus. Uh, Sorry, minus 60. I'm sorry, just kidding. Minus 17 uh, plus 15 is minus 2. There we go. Getting confused. Alrighty, now, already, we can, for most purposes, we can just stop there. Um, I'm going to push it to, to the reduced rational form. But if we're solving this system, what does this say? It says that if you give me an x, y, and z that satisfy this system, then they will satisfy this system because they're row equivalent and they will satisfy this system, and therefore 0 equals minus 2. Is that true? Does 0 equal minus 2? I don't think so. Therefore, that's a contradiction. You couldn't possibly give me an xyz that satisfy the original equation. In other words, there's no solution. Can you see that? Good. OK. But what if we, uh, what if we actually wanted to sort of analyze more about what's going on with this system? Um, what if you did push it a little further to the reduced rational and form? Then um, notice the two remaining pivots. There are not, there's not a pivot in every row, not a pivot in every column. Those are sign very significant facts. Um, and um, the pivots happen to be one already because I already did that one equal to one, and that one started to be one. So it's pretty simple to get to the next step. You, you start from the bottom. I remember this time. That's good. And then I'm just going to take. 2 times the, the middle row and subtract it from the top row. So I'm going to take 1 minus 2 times the second row. And that's going to be 1, 0. 3 minus 4 is minus 1. And 4 minus 6 is minus 2. And there we go. That's a pivot or leading entry. And its column is clear other than that. That's a pivot. Its column is clear. The pivots are equal to 1. That's the reduced row echelon form. And one thing we can certainly read off, again, is that there's no solution, because I've got zeros up until the very last column, and, this, and that's in there. One way to say it is that, that, that you, can, can, you can actually say that's a pivot 
if you include this column as sort of a f part of the full matrix, you say, oh, that's the pivot. And the way you say it that way is, I do not want a pivot to end up in the last column, because that's going to end up saying 0 equals a non-zero number. By definition, a pivot has to be non-zero. A leading entry has to be non-zero. And here we have a leading entry that's in the wrong place. OK, one more example. Let's start out with, let's see if I can do this under the 10 minute mark or else it will spill off over just a little bit. Not too much. OK, let's go to town here. Subtract twice the first row, so I get 0, 4 minus 6 is minus 2, 6 minus 5, 6 minus 10, rather, is minus 4. 8 minus 14 is minus 6. Subtract 3 times the first row from this bottom row. That's 0. 5 minus 9 is minus 4. 7 minus 15 is minus 8. And 9 minus 21 is minus 12. You might notice something already. Let me push that up so you can definitely see it. Okay. We'll squeeze it in here. Rewrite the first two rows real quick. And I just uh, subtract twice this row from the bottom row, and it all cancels out. That is a very interesting case. Let me put it over here. We can go ahead and push to the reduce row echelon form. A lot of people tend to see the 0 equals 0 and say, that's also weird and disturbing, therefore there's no solution. But 0 equals 0 is a true fact, as opposed to 0 equals minus 2, which is a false fact. So, hence not a fact, I guess. A falsehood. Um, so this is just saying that secretly, these equations weren't really three independent conditions to put on x, y, and z. What it really, another way to say this, we might not be able to, to talk about this in the time we have, is that this equation, 3x plus 5y plus 7z equals 9, is a logical consequence of these two equations. And in fact, if you look at the steps we did, we could basically unpack that and, and see how this equation can be built out of just scalar multiplying and adding these two equations. Um, and so really, this was two equations and three unknowns in disguise. And now we just have rewritten it as equivalent equations, where it's much more obvious that it's really just two equations and three unknowns. Now, I'm just going to make that pivot equal to 1. Now there really is, honest to God, no pivot in the last row, period, no matter how you interpret that, no matter what you think of the last column. And there's very little to do. There's only one entry that I need to kill. Start writing from the bottom now. And 3, so I'm going to subtract 3 times that bottom row. I'm going to get 0, of course. 5 minus 6 is minus 1. 7 minus 6 is 1. And then the question is, what do we do with this? What does this mean? And remember, it means this is the simplest possible way to write an equivalent system to the original thing. It's x minus z equals 1, y plus 2z equals 3. So when I write those down, I get x, my, I'm going to leave a gap to indicate that there's that no y there, x minus z equals 1, y plus 2z equals 3. And that indicates to me that I can choose z to be anything I want. And what's going on there is that I look at the row of zeros, or I, what, what, actually what I do is I look at the columns, and the x column, that's the first column, has a pivot in it. That's not a free variable. That's a leading variable or a, or a bound variable. Lots of synonyms for that. The y variable is not free, but the z variable is. If there's no pivot in that column, it's a free variable. And you just get to choose it arbitrarily. And then you just put everything else on the other side. That's going to be 1 plus c, and y equals 3 plus 2z. And of course, z is just itself. And so I get, let's see if I can squeeze this in, 1, 3, 0, plus z times 1, 2, 0. And the key thing is that those numbers, except for just a couple of signs changed, that's a minus, sorry. These, these signs here, these things here, show up here. 
with a sign change, and these show up identical verbatim here. Okay, gotta stop.